Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Shaman's Cave. I'm Renee Barabo, and we have a great topic for you today. Hi, everyone. I'm Sandra Ingerman, and welcome to the Shaman's Cave. So I was just thinking as I was hitting the record button, the topic for today is, is how to get deeper with your own personal spiritual practices to stay sane during these windy times that we're in. And what I was smiling about as we got started was that one of the ways that I stay sane is that I have these great conversations with Sandra every couple of weeks and especially uh, we love our conversations that we have on the air but we have these awesome discussions off the air too and we've also often threatened about we should just hit the record but we never do and then you know it's just kind of a collection of a body of wisdom that i think we both relish and share together absolutely yeah we have um we we have a, a lot of mutual support which is what we all need right now. And that is a spiritual practice um, for all of us um, that helps us stay centered and sane. And I never go, oh my God, I have to do another shaman's cave with Renee. I just, I'm, I'm never ready. I'm always late. <laughs> to go <laughs> i know it's like it was like an unlikely unison and i think it was isis who one of your spirit guides said you two need to do a podcast and i'm there like i mean i remember it was like over five years ago and you said you know i just got this guidance that we're supposed to do a podcast and i and this is this is me the reluctant shaman i'm there like why me <laughs> I am kind of funny and cute, but you know, it's just like, but over the years, our relationship has grown. And, and this is one of the deeply rooted spiritual practices that I show up for. And like Sandra, I've never thought, oh, I got to go meet with Sandra today because we make each other laugh and we have a good time. And, you know, we it's just a really, I think what makes this as terms of a, a good spiritual union is that it's mutually beneficial and giving. She does her part, I do my part. We don't barely talk about what part we're doing, but it just comes together effortlessly. So if you don't have a friend like that or somebody in your life like that, one of the first practices I would say is ask the universe to give you somebody who shows up equally in the relationship. Absolutely. That's really an important um, point. I know uh, one of the, the strengths of my own marriage was that I felt I didn't marry um, somebody who was going to be a student of mine, you know, <laughs> somebody who needed a wise woman in their life. <laughs> I married somebody who was an equal um, yeah. to me, where we could have um, conversations where I learned from him and he learns from from me and um, you know it's really important it's like Renee and I being able to support each other in those same ways where you actually have somebody in your life who um, who you can who you can talk back and forth but from a place of equality not not different levels but you're coming from a shared space, different opinions, different perceptions, different projections, but that's all good. <laughs> I know it's like when you were in the last show, you were talking about the journey you did and I saw the journey and I'm there, oh, I should go do that journey. And yet I haven't yet, but I will because uh, um, I always learn from your journeys and I always experience, you know, like there's this thing when I got back to the desert, uh, my first walk, I'm there oh there's my tree like just a little piece of you know what's a spiritual practice that i wasn't doing that you mentioned uh, four or five years ago that this tree and and so over the years i've watched how this tree it seems to be outgrowing itself it's got cracks and fissures all the way around and yet it's still standing and i kind of look at that like in life the path where what are the cracks and fissures in my own self that mirror this tree that I decided to pick as the tree that I was going to greet every time I took a walk. And there's been times where like, I'm so self-absorbed, I walk right by and then I'll get halfway up the next block and I'm there like, oh, Renee, you didn't say hello to the tree. 
And I turn back around and I go back and, you know, and the tree never judges me and it never, you know, scolds me, but it just stands there as a reminder that our spiritual practices are there, but it's like that old story, like who moved the cheese? I move from it. It never moves from me. Yeah. And I can really relate to that. I, um, um, <clears throat> back in, uh, when we first moved into our house, and that was 27 years ago, I went to a plant store in town, and um, there was a San Pedro. I, I didn't even know what a San Pedro was at that time, and I brought it home. And it turns out that I have this, some kind of magic in growing San Pedro. So <laughs> my living room is filled with San Pedro, and um, I don't take, uh, San Pedro is not an ally for me, so the, the plant is, but taking it is not. Um, so it's just me growing San Pedro and I have something like 11 plants from the <laughs> And so I had to cut one uh, the other uh, few weeks ago because um, it fell over and it needed to be uh, transplanted. And I waited too, too long to do the transplant. And so I come into the living room one day and I, I, I never saw a San Pedro look like this. It, it's only about this big, you know, piece that I cut. And I said, oh my God, I hurt this, this, this baby. I don't know how I did it, but I hurt it. And so every day I go in and I talk to it. I rub it and um, it's doing great, it's doing fine. But the other night I realized I forgot to say goodnight to it. So I, I got up in the middle of the night and I turned my lights on in the living room and I went and then I did my usual ritual with that San Pedro and then I was able to go back to bed. It, it's a commitment to me to this plant that is part of my life. It's part of my community. It's part of my support system um, to see what it's a passion for me of what I can do to bring it back to its health again. <laughs> and that's a real spiritual practice to have that kind of relationship with nature, to have made a commitment to be in that kind of relationship like Renee made to that tree, like I made to this uh, cactus until it it gets healthy. I, I talk to my San Pedro every day, but I give this one just special attention every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that reminds me that see this can see you can see this uh, Christmas cactus behind me. Right. So all I've had to replant all of since I've been away, I had to replant all of my my things. But this particular cactus that's right over my shoulder, a friend gave me, and we had a falling out a couple years ago over something really silly. And, but, I, you know, somebody I've known for over 30 years, and I'm not sure if we're going to reconnect in this lifetime or not. But when I saw the dead Christmas cactus, when I got back and the, the guy had put it out in the yard, I'm there like, you know, if there's any hope for this relationship to, you know, re emerge and re come back together, I think that I need to really work with this, um, this Christmas cactus and work on the relationship from this person gave me this plant. Um, I'm going to nurture it and tend to it. And not to say that that's gonna lead to a result that I want in the other situation, but that it was important enough for me to realize that I could let it wither and die out in the yard, like how it feels with this relationship, or that I could tend to this, nurture it, and you know bring back the life to this plant that is actually an aspect of that relationship yeah yeah and so these kind of commitments that we make um is is part of what we want to talk about today is um we've been talking about for a while on different shows about um how much people um, are surfing the web for information, are uh, surfing everything and not really doing their practices. And I was telling Renee before we started the show, I started writing about this in my transmutation news newsletter um, back in, 
in 2000 when I started it, and I've been writing about it every month that we're surfing the spiritual waves. Uh, and now we're, we're in 2023 and the world has not gotten any better because we're surfing spiritual waves. So how do we go deeper? And so both Renee and I were honest with each other and we're just going to be honest with you. Isis gave me, uh, um, she told me that I really had to take my medicine for the earth work to a deeper level not different practices, nothing different than I've been teaching, but going to a place where I'm doing them from a higher vibration. And so I said to her, and she said that this was for my health. This was what would fix me. And so I started, you know, trying to do my own practices that I teach and write about all the time. But, you know, I find that negative loop coming in, you know, just the challenges that we're dealing with right now. And so I just, I, I had to reflect um, on how I've actually been honest with people my whole entire shamanic career, that I am the hardest client I've ever had to work with. And I need, I, I need uh, practices and I need therapy 24 hours a day. And how I do that is I write books for myself and I teach workshops for myself. And if anybody else happens to read or, or uh, take a workshop, that's a benefit, but I'm actually only doing it for myself um, because it keeps me engaged in the work. And so um, I decided I'm going to teach the work that I'm trying to deepen inside of myself and help other people deepen it um, because I, I know the miracles that come from this work. We have countless, countless miracles that we've seen since, since I birthed the Medicine for the Earth work and it was actually 19, in the 1990s but my book didn't come out till 20, um, uh, you know, to, to 2000. And so, you know, really finding a way to ground your spiritual practices so that you're taking them to the highest level uh, can be challenging right now because of all the distractions that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm kind of having a similar situation. Now, one place where Sandra and I, I don't know if we differ, but that she was talking about that, you know, we haven't been doing our practices and look where we've gotten. I take more of the 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 stance that uh, I was just reading the other day that we're in the sixth cycle of extinction. And what that means is that actually 99% of everything that's walked on this planet or been on this planet before us has already been extinct. But we're in like a massive cycle of extinction at this moment. And how we survive it is a matter of how we get deeper into our practices. And so for me, you know, I, I haven't always been like really good at my rituals and good at my ceremonies and things like that. But I was writing this week about the, I got myself into, a, a, I had to actually see something about how I was working in retrospect. So for example, I was, um, in the fall, somebody tossed some energy my way. So I became hyper vigilant about protecting my house every single night. I mean, like if I forgot it a night in the middle of the night, like you were talking about waking up to talk to the cactus, I would wake up and, you know, put this, this, this energy around that I was using to protect my house. Well, all of a sudden I moved out, you know, and I was trying to rent the house. I had it so far locked down that there was no movement in the, the only thing that came along was a crazy making, you know, coyote type of energy that kind of kept me off track for a minute. And then, you know, uh, Sandra gave me some insight and, and I started to, I started to do my work. I started to unwind it. I started to do energy clearing. I started to do all of these things. And sure enough, as soon as I did the, the, the movement started with, you know, opening it up. But for me, it was a matter of that I'm writing this book and that I really had to see 
how far I had moved away from a certain type of practice or had a done for me practice because my friend Anka used to always do my energy property clearings and that I had to take like almost like I had to become an adult. I had to adulting with my shamanic practices in order to achieve the results that I needed. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, 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 and it, it is. It, it, I, I actually don't. I'm not that far away from Renee's uh, talk on um, believing that we're in the sixth extinction. I, I, I actually. Um, I actually believe that we're all preparing for our own death right now. And I think that's why people are, the, the people who are diving so deep into their trauma work right now are coming out these polished beings, <laughs> um, shiny beings. You know, I see it constantly. You know, I, I whine about people who are on the surface, but there, there is a big population that is going really deep and really going deep into their own history, their contracts with their ancestors, their own traumas in their own life. And, and what, what have we learned from other cultures about what happens when we're at the end of our life is what happens is we finish up our, our unfinished business and that's mm. what people are doing now. And so for me, I don't know, I really don't know if um, we're going through a metaphorical death or we're going through a physical death. I, I actually can't answer that. Mm -hmm. But whichever one it is, it doesn't matter because if you're going through a metaphorical death to be both into a person with a higher consciousness who's living in a, a different dimension of reality, um, then, um, uh, you know, then you do have to um, really go that deep and you do have to die. And we've talked about that, about initiation. Initiation is actually dying while you're alive so that you're birthed into your true authentic self. That's what initiation is about. And um, I think that we're still going through that. And so looping this back to our show, we don't know what the future is leading us to. We, we really don't. No, nobody really knows. Everybody can make stuff up, um, but we really don't know. But it's clear we're going through an initiation that is leading to a death. And so it's all about how much spirit can you bring into your life. Mm -hmm. so that you end up a light being who is living in a different frequency that helps you survive or that brings you to a really good place at the end of your life wherever it leads it leads to a beautiful it leads to just beauty um and so it doesn't hurt to go as deep as you can into your your work mm -hmm. That reminds me when I was working with a client who was diagnosed with breast cancer early in her life. And, you know, she always kept saying, Renee, you, you're, you're powerful. I want you to heal me. And I'm there like, you know, healing you doesn't mean you're going to live. You know, healing you does not mean you're not going to die. Healing you means that you're going to leave this world a better place than you found it. And with more light in yourself for another evolution or a non-evolution depending on you know what your spirit's calling you but that's the part that you know we we want predictable results we want to know like oh if i'm a good person you know i'm if this is whole heaven and hell i'm gonna go to heaven well you know make heaven on earth and you can have heaven on earth even when things are not necessarily going the way that you want. But I do know one thing, when I do my spiritual practices, like for right now, I've been getting back up early to write, but I've been also adding um, a morning meditation in before I get up. And the day just seems to go better. Right. 
it just does. And, and it's just like, you know, and you, you get into your misery and a roundabout in it before you say, oh, what is different? Oh, well, I stopped doing that morning meditation. I, you know, I stopped saying hello to my cactus, all of those things that they, it's not one of them or two of them. It's when all of a sudden they all seem to fall apart and you are back, you know, swimming in the water, drowning. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, as, as we've been saying, there, there are there there are those of us who are doing that deep work and there are those of us who are afraid of doing that deep work and um and the depth is actually a really good place that the dark is a good place it is a good place of transformation it is a good place of renewal it is a good place of learning and so um I think Renee and I are, are both just trying to encourage people not to be afraid to really go as deep as you can into your spiritual work because um, it only leads to a good place. There is no bad place that it leads to. Um, no matter what's happening in the world, it brings you to a better uh, place of peace within. And when you have a better place of peace within, then that's what you're sending out is the vibration and the world starts shifting. Um, mm -hmm. As we all shift our vibration, the world starts shifting too. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's really important for us to uh, not, I think people are so afraid that they're going to miss an important piece of information that's going to change their lives. And information has never changed anybody's life. It never has. It's doing the work that changes people's life. And so that's something for you to reflect on. First of all, you have to reflect on, does, does this have any interest to you? Or do you just want to go along as you're living? That's your choice. That is absolutely your choice. Or do you really want to focus on, wow, I took all these workshops online and there were these, what were the, the, the gems, the tools that you got? And just focus on those tools instead of all the information. <laughs> right. Yes, the, 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 like a couple of weeks ago, I made prayer flags with people. And the very act of sitting there in community with these other people, you know, pulling our wind spirit cards for the year and then intentionally calling into that wind and sending it home every month really changes everything. It just it just does. And it's really hard or to know that I have this year that Eurus, the east wind is going to be accompanying me gives me gives me some solace knowing, oh, this year it's going to be about new beginnings, mind, memory and beliefs like that. I have a theme for the year overarching theme that's going to help me organize and, and work through whatever comes up because I don't know what's going to come up. You know, it looks this way from here, but you know, knowing me, the wind is going to shift tomorrow and there's going to be something new. But if I know, oh, this year I'm concentrating on this, I have a, I have a anchor. And I think we all need anchors at this moment. And so what is your anchor? And it doesn't have to be our anchors. It needs to be your anchor. And what are you going to do to shore that anchor up for yourself so that you're not spinning out in space with the, the little balloons that they're finding up in the air? And, you know, you know you're not going to shoot down your own plants. Um, but, you know, write that down in the, the comments. Tell us what, what you do to anchor yourself. What is your commitment to your own practice that you really need. Yeah, and I just want to share just an example of uh, something that I work with just to give you an idea of how I'm working right now, um, but really want to support um, what Renee said, find your own practices and write about it in the comments of what's anchoring you. I'm really focusing a lot on how I'm cursing myself and my destiny with my own words. 
Mm. And we've done shows on the power of words. And I've talked about how I had a very special time with a, um, a Navajo elder who heard me lecture on the power of words at a uh, conference way back, probably in the 1980s. And she sat down with me and we talked for hours together. And she said that in the Navajo tradition, it's really important that you bless people with all your words and not curse people with all your words. So again, that was like in the 1980s and that was a seed that went so deep inside of me. So that's been part of all my workshops. All my workshops has been teaching people how to talk to clients, teaching people how to talk to themselves, teaching people how to talk to their loved ones, you know, what words are you using? And are you cursing yourself with your words all throughout the day? Or are you blessing yourself all throughout the day with your words? Are you blessing the world or cursing the world with your bad daydreams, your looping bad daydreams? This is this is important work that really creates change in your life, but you have to really do it. You have to really focus on every moment that you curse yourself and others by your own words because you weren't paying attention. So we just have to pay attention, and that means slowing down. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another tool. So. I I didn't want to um, I didn't want to uh, interfere with uh, uh, Renee's ending, but I felt that that was important for me to say because these are the types of practices that we really want to look at that are going to change our lives. Oh, you didn't interrupt my ending. It was kind of the middle. It was just kind of a because <laughs> we hadn't we forgot to tell you one of the spiritual practices that is really really important is to hit like and subscribe <laughs> because then you get reminded that we're going live and you know this might be a small commitment to your own spiritual practice but one of the things that makes me really smile is that um, I rented my place up north to a woman who I really believe she rented it because she wanted to have a spiritual experience and her spiritual experience is not look the way I think she thought it was going to look, but she's taken up to listening to our show every week. Oh, wow. I know. And it's just like, it, it makes it, I love how the universe works in a, in a very, the, the universe does not need us to intercede with its plan. And so I think she's become a real fan and it's really helping her grow. And it didn't exactly look like the retreat she was thinking, but she's certainly getting the support that, that is helpful in her life. And so I honor that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, it's, um, if you look at the spiritual practices that you're doing, uh, just look at the spiritual practices that you're doing and ask yourself, number one, are you doing them? And then, uh, actually watch, um, observe the frequency of um, what happens to you when you start to get into some kind of spiritual state where you light a candle or where you um, burn some incense to clear yourself or you start to do a ceremony outside. Just notice, are you kind of, were you thinking about other things? Well, I mean, I could, I could light sage and be thinking about other things and for, forget why I'm lighting it. <laughs> we can all do that. It's so, this world is just one giant distraction and we can get distracted with so much. So notice the difference. Just notice the difference if you put full attention, focus and concentration and your intention um, into your practices, notice if something changes in your life. And if something changes in your life, that means, and it, for the good, that means that what you're doing is working. If it doesn't change your life for the good, then you have to go back and um, really meditate on, um, are you trying to copy practices that you heard were powerful, 
Do you need something else, something coming from uh, your soul? Uh, you need to go down into your soul. So shamanism is very result oriented. It always has been. Um, if, if shamans couldn't cure the people, um, the people died. Uh, and it's, it's just that simple. So think of the tens and tens of thousands of years this practice has been around and it's always been result oriented. What results are you getting from the spiritual practices that you're doing? And if you're not, you need to relook at either changing them or deepening them. Hmm. Now that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what a beautiful way to end. And, and um, you've reminded me that over the years a lot of time, you know, because I like to dance around the, the the magic and the spirit part. And Sandra says, if there's no spirit, Renee, there's no magic and there's no shamanism. So remember that, that this week you need, you need those things. Those are the components. Like if your magic's not working, it's not. <laughs> So thank you, and we'll see you again soon. Blessings, everyone.